One really common question that I get, why is my cat so stressed? Like, what is causing the stress in my cat's life? What do cats get stressed out by? And I think that's a great question, and I'm glad that you guys are putting it in the comments below these videos, because then I answer them like this. You know, there are very defining stressful things in any cat's life, whether that's moving to another place, whether that's the death of an animal family member, a human family member, going to the vet, getting into a carrier, going for a drive, you know, those big, big changes. So that is a given. But what about the everyday stressors? What, what about the parts of your life that are you know, just stressful and you, and you wouldn't even know it. But of course you guys know what your cat looks like when they're stressed, so then it's just simple deduction, right? Right? You don't know what your cat looks like when they're stressed? Oh, all right. Well then, let's get catified. Yeah. What does it look like when your cat is stressed? What is the warning sign to you that, oh, well I gotta look around and figure out what may have caused this? Your cat is doing something they didn't do before. This is something sudden, and it can be something as noticeable as, uh, where is he? You know, Chester usually comes down here for dinner. He's usually the first in line for dinner. Where is he? And he's under a bed, under the couch, up on top of the fridge. He's, you know, looking around. He's paranoid, for lack of a better word. Then there's things like inappropriate elimination. Suddenly, Chester's not going in the litter box and he used his litter box since day one with never a problem. Don't forget, all of these behaviors are connected in some way or another to fear, anxiety, and discomfort, which leads me to this point, which should be in neon lights. Neon lights, when I say this, go to the vet. Go to the vet. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. In fact, fork out that 200 plus a little bit and find out what's going on if there is anything going on because physical distress is stress. If they're experiencing something that puts them off balance or in a compromised situation, that raw cat kicks in. I am in trouble. It can be anything from a urinary tract infection to a bad tooth, to an abscess somewhere, to some upset in their belly anything. So at the top of this, I talked about the major stressors in a cat's life and things that we should plan for to the best of our ability because we know it's gonna stress them out. Like for instance, this video over my head right here, that's about how you can get your cat to be adjusted to a carrier so they can go to the vet and not be so stressed out that they pee and poop everywhere and don't come out from under the bed for a day. But what about the ones that are just everyday stressors? Things that just actually might get by you because it's just you living your life and yet it's a constant, you know, water torture type of thing on your cat. Let's talk about those things. You're watching CBS, the loudest channel on TV. Previously on NCIS. Cats can be overstimulated by things happening in the environment that again, might get right past you. So for instance, that could be that time of the day where everybody comes home and the kids come home and, and everyone's yelling and screaming and we're, we're getting ready for dinner and that moment, that, some cats will get all playful and like, I wanna be part of this and some will just retreat in the back with wide eyes or wind up on the shelf or on top of the fridge or something. It's up to you to be just observant in those moments. Kids in general, I mean, not only can kids of a certain age specifically be loud and unpredictably loud, but they also occupy space in a way that grown-ups don't, that even other cats don't, and they will make a lot of noise. Construction in the house. If you're doing any kind of remodeling, not only are you taking away territory because whatever room it is, let's say it's the kitchen being remodeled, it's sort of off limits. You got strangers coming in and out all day long. They're making tons of noise, tracking in scents that are completely abnormal. And to my point about you not even noticing this thing, I do private consultations. If you guys are interested, by the way, you can uh, apply to have a consultation with me. I'll put the link in the description. I always ask for a video walkthrough of the home and any supporting video because I can't be there with you as to what's going on. And in this one home, which was very much about stress and cat being on edge, the client was walking me through the home and we get to the living room and in the middle of the living room, the TV was on blast. And it was not just the TV being on blast, but it was also, she had like an eight-year-old watching TV. So it was that eight-year-old cartoon crazy music. And even I got overstimulated because you live with it day in and day out. You just don't notice it. But the volume of that TV was 
crazy. This is why we do those video walkthroughs. But what I'm trying to say is with the sort of symptoms I told you about, sometimes it really says, okay, how does a cat experience this differently than I do? And in this case, we gotta remember, cat hearing is incredibly sensitive. They hear things and overtones in this music and the violins at the very top of that synthesizer overtone, the echo of the snare, you know, whatever it is, and that causes stress. So check out the environment. It can be how loud we talk. It could be the TV. It could be any of the things I talked about. So keep your eye out on that. And yes, I have solutions for what you might be experiencing with this part of things, but I'm gonna let you guys have all of that towards the end of the video. So listen, if you recognize that your cat has environmental overstimulation, go ahead. There's chapter markings on here. You can go skip to the end. But if you figure, wait, if it might be this, it might be other things, keep watching. Did you know that the majority of you guys who are watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel? I mean, maybe you thought you were, but you never hit that subscribe button. So let me take your finger to it right now and there, everything's better. Subscribe to the channel, give it a like, and also don't forget, put comments in, in the comments section. Let me know what you're thinking. Let's have a conversation because that's how I know what videos to make. Okay, enough of me. Now let's get on to our next stressor. Cats do not like anarchy. Whether they're outdoors in colonies, whether they're indoors in your house, they really base their life right down to where the sun is around their world. They really need that structure. I mean, here's a great example. I mean, during the pandemic, Everyone went home. All of a sudden we were home all the time. We were working from home, living at home, all the kids were home, all the adults were home, and the animals were like, uh, you know, this is very different. It's that level of change. First they had to get used to us being there and they wanted to just like climb in a hole or jump out a window for a while. Then they're like, oh, I can get to like this and then we leave again. That's the kind of thing that we have to be aware of. So changes in your routine, which could revolve around a work situation or not work situation, the comings and goings of new people, like a new boyfriend, girlfriend, the arrival of a child, the comings and goings of a new animal family member. These changes are really important. And it's, it's important that we, that we anticipate it and do something about it, which I'll get to in a little bit. So I just talked about changes in your routine, but what about changes in their routine, in the cat routine? Now we can be talking about something as simple as changing food, that all of a sudden you're trying to get them on the good stuff and they're like, nope, you know? And of course I talk about that in my three-part food videos, which the playlist is right there over my head, but you wanna do it slowly. You wanna do everything slowly. A new cat litter, new position of litter boxes, rearranging the furniture, and anybody in, the, uh, in TV land out there who has taken a couch from one side of the living room to the other, all of a sudden the cats are exploring that space and that couch as if it were a couch dropped from the moon. Like, where did this thing come from? That's the world of cat. Change does not work well for them. Which reminds me, if you are trying a new litter, do not just take away a litter box and put in a new one. You add another one, you try that litter, you see if they prefer it, and then you slowly switch, you know? Everything, food, same way. All of these things take getting used to and can be overcome with planning, which I will get to later. And here's one that you probably didn't think about, but I was talking about position of the sun. The change in seasons, the change of the clocks, seasonal affective disorder in animals is a real thing, everybody. And when the days get shorter and there's less sunlight, since cats really depend on sunlight for their well-being, that's a big change. I, I think that the time change thing is, is really an example of how subtle to you it can get unless you really start putting yourself in their paws for a second, knowing that it affects you. How does it affect a cat? And just that awareness, think of them. Just think to yourself, is this affecting my cat? That's all. Now beyond just being aware, you don't wanna be walking around the house on eggshells either. Get them to be more confident around challenges and that's the thing we gotta do. You wanna bring challenge to their lives and have them be able to accept it and accept it with that sense of, yeah, I can do this. So how do we do that? Well, the challenge line, is something that I talk about in a lot of my videos. And it's this notion that if I can identify 
On one side of a line, my cat's comfortable. Let's say that we're introducing your cat to a new cat. On, you know, we're gonna have meals on opposite sides of a closed door. And if I'm feeding it three feet away on either side, well, the cats walk up, they eat, they walk away. If I go two feet and nine inches, challenge line, because on the other side of that line, I'm not gonna eat, or I'm gonna dive at the door and pause under the door. Okay, let's start at three. Make sure that for the first couple of days, every meal, hmm, I know what to expect. One paw over the line. And you don't go over the line in a way that it feels like an ice bath. You just one paw at a time it. Now, another concept associated with challenge line is the concept of desensitization and counter conditioning. And yes, there's a video right there about how to acclimate your cat to something that they're afraid of. So what we do is in a very deliberate way, we first expose it to them gently, and at the same time, we're desensitizing, we're counter conditioning by saying, not only is this not a really evil, terrible monster under the bed, but it's a nice monster <laughs> under the bed. <laughs> If there's a good association with what scared them. So just for instance, let's say the sound of an ambulance going by and you just happen to live in New York City like where I grew up and there's just ambulances going by, fire engines going by, it's the siren that sets them off. So what we do is we get a recording of a siren and we, we start it at very, very low levels and it happens when we're either playing with them or we're feeding and then with every meal, we challenge line it up and the good starts to be like, oh, wait a minute, every time I eat, I hear this cool sound, you know? It actually works that way. It works with humans. We call it exposure therapy. It works with animals just as well. So think about that one and watch the video if your cat is afraid of sirens or ceiling fans or any of the other things that I talk about in that video. On the other side of this whole thing, don't feel like you have to baby your cats all the time because they'll never know what challenge is. On the other side of that coin is, oh, they'll just get over it. No, it's fine, they'll just get over it. They're gonna have to get over it. My kid watches loud TV, right? That's not gonna happen either because all that does is perpetuate that fear, perpetuate that discomfort, and perpetuate the notion that when your child walks into the living room and turns the TV on, it's going to be like World War III. There's ways to get around that, but we don't want a baby. We don't want to get over it. Neither one of those are gonna work. You know what one everyday stressor I didn't even talk about is your stress. If things are really stressful in your life, cats are energetic sponges. They just pick up on what's going on and they just put it right back out again. And it is astounding the way it works. Like I will never forget one of my early consults that I did when it, when, and I was going into someone's home and they couldn't figure out why the cat was peeing outside the box. And you know, in talking to them, trying to just get a history, all of a sudden the couple started fighting. And I mean fighting. And I find myself like I'm at a tennis match watching the two of them go, but it was like a tennis match of horror. And I'm just going back and forth. And then I look down and there's the cat doing the same thing. And then she walked off and she peed on the wall. Just like that. Your stress is their stress. Job situation, the things you bring home. Just take a moment. When things are happening, go take a beat. The whole count to 10, whatever. Take a walk, do something so you're not spreading the cancer. Your whole animal family is that way. Just be aware of how you manifest your own stress. That's a big one. Man, this is stuff that you have heard me talk about, hopefully, a lot. If you have hung around this channel long enough, the number one thing is the concept of the three R's, routine, ritual, rhythm. Let's get that routine going. Let's invest it. And then, because it happens every day, it becomes ritual. And then we're talking about the rhythm of everyone's life. The alarm clock goes up, and then we have rituals that go along with that alarm clock. We come home, we go to bed, same things happen with a cat based on playtime, meal time, cuddle time. If the more structured you are, those three R's, and I promise you this is true, are going to help save the day. And by the way, all the rituals that are contained, I mentioned play, yeah man, play with your cat. Playing with your cat takes whatever stress they're feeling and gives it this instinctual out. I know that my body needs to do something. Oh, that's right, hunt, catch, kill, boom, boom, boom. Run around. That will also dispel your own stress as well. Play with your cat. Now, in terms of environment, catification. Giving your cats places to get away, but not hide at the same time. For instance, I was talking about a scared cat could go under the couch or on top of the fridge, and those are their scared places. What's the opposite of that? What I call the confident wear. 
The only way that you're gonna know where that place is on the vertical axis where your cat goes from this to this is by finding out. I've written entire books on this. Me and Kate Benjamin, two books. Catification, catify to satisfy. That's how important environmental enrichment is to your cat's lives. So beyond just picking them up, there's catification all over this channel. And finally, and especially if you're moving from place to place, if you're traveling, but you know, any time your cat needs that safe place to go, that panic room, that's called base camp. And establishing base camp for your cat, man, that's good stuff. And that means that in a room, and oftentimes it's your bedroom, there is the things that really just resonate with your cat from a scent perspective, from just a, a, a place that's important, like in the windows on your bed, litter boxes and, and scratching posts and cat trees, all in this one space. Because then once we get them feeling ah, in that one space, we can take all the elements and start bringing them out to the rest of the house, put new stuff in there to marinate, and suddenly everywhere is base camp. Like I said before, I know I'm a broken record here, but there are so many videos on this channel that talk about that. So beyond just words and books and videos, what else do I have for you guys? Well, glad you asked. I've got products that either I make or I curate on my shop that will definitely help with stress. The first thing are these. This is my, my Flower Essence Solutions. It's a line that I helped create with a vet 20 some odd years ago. They work. This one right here is Stress Stopper and it should be in everyone's closet. Man, if your cat's going through it, any of the stuff I'm talking about, this will help bring that energetic temperature down a little bit and I encourage you to have it. Beyond that, nothing says I love you more than treats and toys. And I've got my own interactive toys, freeze-dried meat treats, and those are things that help keep those three R's in check along with all the beds we sell. Just check out the store and you will see all different kinds of ways your cats will say thank you. And look, after all this, if holistic solutions, if all the things I'm talking about, if there are natural supplements that could help your cat, if none of those things are working, there's nothing wrong with saying, my cat needs medication. Nothing wrong with that. And if your cat cannot control their stress, sometimes it's a little bit of nurture and sometimes it's just nature. And some of us experience stress in a much more profound way than others. So please don't feel self-conscious or in any way ashamed about going to your vet and talking about medication for your cat because whatever makes them feel better is something that you should embrace. So yeah, there are some big hardcore stressors in the world and there are just some that just gnaw at you every day like a loud TV. Let's just be aware and adjust and make sure that we're thinking about our cats in an everyday way. And the biggest thing I can tell you is just watch their bodies. Their bodies will tell you everything you need to know. Remember, aggression is fear, is anxiety. Hiding, fear, anxiety, discomfort, go to the vet. Big neon letters. Anyway, I'm talking about all this and it's making me stressed out and I gotta go and, um, you know, sit in my base camp. All right, everybody, until next time we speak, don't forget, I wanna see in the comments what you wanna see and then you'll see it. Light and love and mojo to you.